by the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, even the darkest night will end, and the sun will rise and shine, and the sun will rise and shine. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله MashaAllah Azawajal, I hope you are all in good health and Alhamdulillah Azawajal with Iman and also enjoying a very beautiful morning. And Alhamdulillah Azawajal, we have a, a very important personalities or rather should I say personalities. We're going to talk about two personalities today that are very, very important in our history of Islam and also Alhamdulillah, especially in the knowledge and closeness to the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah, we've had a, we've got a daily hadith, a daily reminder for yourself as well, and for ourselves as well also, obviously. And inshallah, we've got a very beautiful kalam and tilawat, inshallah. And the main aim is that we start this beautiful, you know, rise and shine morning, alhamdulillah, with the tilawat of the Quran, with the blessings, as the scholars, they say that those people who listen and read to the Quran early in the morning, during the whole day, Allah Ta'ala will give them blessings and barakat. So inshallah, we are all needy of these blessings and barakat as well. So inshallah, as well, hopefully, uh, once we start the bayan with the tilawat and not, inshallah, as well, the blessings will start to roll in. So embrace yourself and let's all go towards listening to the beautiful recitation of the glorious Qur'an. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim. Main Allah ta'ala ki panah mein aata hoon, shaytan-e mardood se. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allah ke naam se shuru, jo nihayat mehrban, رحم والا قال ما منعك الا تسجد اذ امرتك قال انا خير منه خلقتني من نار وخلقته من طين فرمایا کس چیز نے تجھے روکا کہ تو نے سجدہ نہ کیا جب میں نے تجھے حکم دیا تھا بولا میں اس سے بہتر ہوں تو نے مجھے آگ سے بنایا اور اسے مٹی سے بنایا قال فاهبط منها فما يكون لك ان تتكبر فيها فخرج انك من الصاغرين فرمایا تو یہاں سے اتر جا تجھے نہیں پہنچتا کہ یہاں رہ کر غرور کرے نکل تو ہے ذلت والوں میں قال انظرني الى يوم يبعثون ولا مجھے فرصت دے اس دن تک کہ لوگ اٹھائے جائیں قول انک من المغریب فرمایا تجھے محلت ہے قول فبما اغویتنی لأقعدن لهم صراطك المستقیب بولا تو قسم اس کی کہ تُو نے مجھے گمراہ کیا میں ضرور تیرے سیدھے راستے پر ان کی طاق میں بیٹھوں گا ثم پھر ضرور میں ان کے پاس آؤں گا ان کے آگے اور پیچھے اور دہنے اور بائیں سے اور تو ان میں اکثر کو شکر گزار نہ پائے گا قال خرج منها مذعوما مدحورا لما تبعك منهم لأملأن جہنم منكم اجمعین فرمایا یہاں سے نکل جا 
रद्द किया गया रांदा यानी दुतकारा हुआ जरूर जो उनमें से तेरे कहे पर चला मैं तुम सब से जहन्नम भर दूंगा और आदम तू और तेरा जोड़ा जन्नत में रहो तो उसमें से जहा चाहो खाओ और उस पेड़ के पास न जाना के हद से बढ़ने वालों में होगे फिर शैतान ने उनके जी यानी दिल में खतरा डाला कि उन पर खोल दे उनकी शर्म की चीजें जो उनसे छुपी थी और बोला तुम्हें तुम्हारे रब ने इस पेड़ से इसीलिए मना फरमाया है कि कहीं तुम दो फरिश्ते हो जाओ या हमेशा जीने वाले हबीब सल्ला मोहम्मद सल्लाफ and these verses of the quran are talking about how the shaitan denied the the sajda to adam alayhi salatu wassalam meaning that when allah taala ordered the shaitan to do sajda to adam alayhi salam the shaitan he said that i am better than him because you created me out of fire now this the scholars they mentioned was the pride of the shaitan you know as they say that the shaitan thought that he was better than adam alayhi salam but at that time he wasn't that he was better than adam alayhi salatu wassalam he did not follow the commands of allah azza wa jal and as muslims we need to follow the commands of allah azza wa jal and pride is something that will eat away a person and make that person if he is a, in a high rank his pride will make him come to the earth just like the shaitan he was muallimul malakut he was the teacher of the angels yet when he do not do sajda to adam alayhi salatu wassalam he was kicked out of paradise the the ulama the scholars they say that we need to understand that if we have pride inside ourselves then whatever good we do thinking that we are doing good will not be counted because that is pride and on the day of judgment it says that allah taala will say to a person that you have pride in you whatever you did you did not do it for me you did it for other people go and get your reward from them how are you going to get reward from other people it is only allah who will give you that reward and this is what we need to have i am not better than anyone else yeah the ulama the scholars they say always think about yourself being in- inferior to other people think that everyone is better than you then you might stand a chance that you will be successful in the court of allah azza wa jalla so always saying i am better i am this i am that me 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 this is not good and this is not what a muslim should be a muslim should be no he is better than me he is a muslim he is better than me inshallah azza wa jalla then allah taala will make us successful as well we have a kalam for you to listen as well and uh, why why we listen to the kalam is the praise of the prophet sallallahu taala alaihi wa alihi wasallam and no doubt praising the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is praising our rabb azza wa jalla because allah taala himself praises him in the quran inna allaha wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala an-nabi ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima allah taala praises the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the scholars this in the mention a very beautiful thing they say that every creation will perish everyone will die yani there will be no one to do the remembrance to do the zikr of allah azza wa jalla because everyone's dead everyone's finished but because allah taala is all living allah taala will never die therefore the remembrance and the praise of our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam will never die as well let's go towards the beautiful kalam and listen to it as well inshallah sallu alal habib sallallahu taala ala muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam
آپ کی نسبت اینانا اے حسین ہے بڑی دولت اینانا اے حسین دور کر فرقت اینانا اے حسین اپنی دے قلبت اینانا اے حسین آپ کی نسبت اینانا اے حسین ہے بڑی دولت اینانا اے حسین یا نبی میرے آقا یا نبی میرے آقا یا نبی میرے آقا یا نبی یا نبی غم تو آرا چین لے لے گی نبی دے دو یہ راحت اینانا اے غسے اب مدینے میں بلا کر دور کر آقا یہ غم فرقت اینانا اے حسین آپ کی نسبت اینانا اے حسین ہے بڑی دولت اینانا اے حسین دور کر فرقت اینانا اے حسین اپنی دے قلبت اینانا اے حسین میں مدینے کا مسافر اب بنو کیجئے رحمت اینانا اے حسین چل مدینہ کی بشارت لیجئے کیجئے رحمت اینانا اے حسین آپ کی نسبت اینانا اے حسین ہے بڑی دولت اینانا اے حسین آپ کی نسبت میرے آقا یا نبی آپ کی نسبت اینانا اے حسین ہے بڑی دولت اینانا اے حسین اب نغم اور چشم نم دے دیجئے کیجئے رحمت اینانا اے حسین عشق میں آہے برور و تار ہو کیجئے رحمت اینانا اے حسین آپ کی نسبت اینانا اے حسین ہے بڑی دولت اینانا اے حسین دور کر فرقت اینانا اے حسین اپنی دے قلبت اینانا اے حسین یا رسول اللہ انظر حالنا یا حبیب اللہ اسم قالنا انني في بحر حم مغرق خذ يدي ساحل لنا اشكالنا ابن جلب سيطا فرمائيه نزع من راحت انانا اي حسين تو بقي پاک میں دو گز زمین تم پہ طلبت اینانا اے حسین آپ کی نسبت اینانا اے حسین ہے بڑی دولت اینانا اے حسین دور کر فرقت اینانا اے حسین اپنی دے قلبت اینانا اے حسین دعوت اسلامی والوں پر صدا کیجئے رحمت اینانا اے حسین ہر ولی کا واسطہ تار پر کیجئے رحمت اینانا اے حسین آپ کی نسبت اینانا اے حسین ہے بڑی دولت اینانا اے حسین دور کر فرقت اینانا اے حسین اپنی دے قلبت اینانا اے حسین آپ کی نسبت اینانا اے حسین ہے بڑی دولت اینانا اے حسین صلو علی الحبیب صلی اللہ تعالی علی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ماشاءاللہ آپ کی نسبت نانا اے حسین سبحان اللہ ویری بیویفل کلام پریزنگ دا بیلویڈ پروفیٹ صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وسلم اور اولسو دا بیویفل گرانسن آف دا پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم حضرت سیدنا امام حسین رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ ماشاءاللہ حضرت اللہ علیہ وسلم ماشاءاللہ حضرت اللہ علیہ وسلم 
It was such a beautiful kalam and especially the poetry. And this kalam was written by Amir al sunnah If you remember the last uh, verse, the last poem of the kalam, they mentioned the word attar. And attar is a name that Amir al sunnah uses in his poetry a lot, mashallah. So alhamdulillah, very beautiful kalam. So we've started our morning with the beautiful recitation of the Quran. We've listened to the beautiful kalam. And now, inshallah, we've got a very a beautiful personality that we are going to talk about. And especially this personality has given us a lot of you know, knowledge and alhamdulillah has written a lot of books as well, especially in the, uh, the late 20th century. MashaAllah, so we're going to talk about Hazrat Sayyiduna Sadr Sharia, Mawlana Amjad Ali Azumi Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, and we're going to be talking about one of the most beautiful personalities, such a personality that when he entered into Islam, Everything changed, alhamdulillah. And that was the beautiful personality of none other, Hazrat Sayyiduna Amir Hamza radiallahu ta'ala. And we're waiting for Habibai to come into the studio and then we'll talk about the beautiful life of Sayyiduna Amir Hamza radiallahu ta'ala. And inshallah, we're going to talk about his uh, in, in coming into Islam, his love for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and his love for the deen of Allah azza wa jal. Let's start off uh, with Hazrat Sayyiduna Sadr al-Shariya. Maulana Amjad Ali Azmi Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali. Who was he? Maulana Amjad Ali Azmi Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali. He was one of the closest and one of the most important Khalifa of Sayyidi Ala Hazrat Imam Ali Sunnat Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu. Just to talk about who he was and what personality, what ranks he has in Islam. Ala Hazrat Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, he gave him the seat or the, the rank of qazi islam of India. Now to be the qazi islam of Islam of India was a very, very beautiful, you know, authority that Allah Hazrat Rahmatullah gave him. Now remember, at that time, India was one, Pakistan, India and Bangladesh, they were all part of Hind. And Sayyidi, Maulana Amjad Ali Azmi Rahmatullah Ta'ala, he became the qazi islam yani all the authority of Islam, he was of India. Sadru Sharia, you can also you know, judge his character that he was the greatest and the closest uh, Khalifa of Allah Hazrat Imam Ali Sunnat radiallahu ta'ala He was very, very loyal to Allah Hazrat rahmatullahi ta'ala and such love for the Islamic knowledge that he used to spend a lot of time with Allah Hazrat Imam Ali Sunnat radiallahu ta'ala and he used to sit with him, he used to travel with him and subhanallah azza wa he used to you know talk about and he used to talk to Allah Hazrat rahmatullahi ta'ala regarding the day to day affairs and also the knowledge of the deen. He was a master and the book that he has written subhanallah Bahare Shariat and his book Bahare Shariat the scholars they say that it is an encyclopedia of fiqh of Hanafi fiqh in the Urdu language and subhanallah many of his volumes of uh, Bahari Shariat have been translated into English by many Sunni scholars as well and one of the most important chapters of Bahari Shariat is the first chapter in which he writes about the Aqidah of Allah Azza wa Jal, the Aqidah of Ahl Sunnat, the Aqidah of Tawheed, the Aqidah of Risalat and also the Aqidah of the Awliya Allah. That is how beautiful this book is. Maktabatul Madina, Alhamdulillah Azza wa Jal, has published this book Bahari Sharid in a very beautiful gift set as well. And I would request people, MashaAllah Azza wa Jal, to sponsor these books and to give to your local Ali Medin, to your local scholars as well. It's a very, very important book. Many of the Masail that Amir al Sunnat has uh, written in his book, Laws of Salah, and other fiqhi books that we have, they are all derived from Bahari Sharia. So you can imagine how beautiful this book is. Sadr Sharia, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, had a lot of love for children. Why? Because obviously the children are our leaders of the next generation. Sadr Sharia was a very, very practicing upon the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, inshallah, Azawajal, Sadr al-Shariya, rahmatullahi ta'ala li, when he would act upon the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you could see how he would act upon the beautiful sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jin ki har har ada sunnat mustafa aise Sadr al-Shariya pe laakhu salam. Now, 
آپ کی خصوصیت میں یہ بھی تھا کہ آپ گھر یا باہر کبھی نماز قضا نہ ہونے دیتے ہی وڈ نیور یو نو مس ہیز صلاح ایون دو ہی واز آ ہوم اور ایون دو ہی واز ٹریولنگ ایون وین دیر از ٹائمز دیر ہی از ال صدر الشریہ رحمۃ اللہ تعالی علیہ ہی نیور بیکیم ال وی ہیو اے ویری بیوٹیفل کلام ان پریز آف سیدی امیر حمزہ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ دا بلیسڈ انکل آف دا پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم وی ہیو من قبد من قبد مینس ان پریز آف سیدی امیر حمزہ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ سو لیٹس لسن ٹو دس بیوٹیفل کلام اینڈ ان شاء اللہ از ویل ٹاک اباؤٹ ہیز ویری بیوٹیفل اینڈ بلیسڈ لائف از ویل صلو علی الحبیب صلی اللہ تعالیٰ علی محمد صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وسلم یا امیر الطیب یا امیر الطیب یا امیر الطیب یا امیر الطیب یا ام رسول اللہ یا ام رسول اللہ یا سید الشہداء یا سید حمزہ یا حمزہ یا ام رسول اللہ یا ام رسول اللہ یا سید الشہداء یا سید حمزہ دافع رنج و بلا آپ ہے بس آپ ہے دافع رنج و بلا آپ ہے بس آپ ہے یا ام رسول اللہ یا ام رسول اللہ یا سید الشہداء یا سید حمزہ یا ام رسول اللہ یا ام رسول اللہ یا سید الشہداء یا سید حمزہ مصطفیٰ کے شیر ہے سارے دشمن زیر ہے مصطفیٰ کے شیر ہے سارے دشمن زیر ہے جرتوں کا سلسلہ آپ ہے بس آپ ہے جرتوں کا سلسلہ آپ ہے بس آپ ہے یا ام رسول اللہ یا ام رسول اللہ یا سید الشہداء یا سید حمزہ یا امیر الطیب یا امیر الطیب یا امیر الطیب یا امیر الطیب دل شکست کا میں کھڑا آپ کی دہلی دل شکستہ میں کھڑا آپ کی دہلیز پر دشت غم میں آسرا آپ ہے بس آپ ہے دشت غم میں آسرا آپ ہے بس آپ ہے یا ام رسول اللہ یا ام رسول اللہ یا سید الشہداء یا سید حمزہ یا ام رسول اللہ یا ام رسول اللہ یا سید الشہداء یا سید حمزہ حشر کی گرمی میں ہے چاندنی کا سائبہ حشر کی گرمی میں ہے چاندنی کا سائبہ مصطفیٰ کے دل ربا آپ ہے بس آپ ہے مصطفیٰ کے دل ربا آپ ہے بس آپ ہے یا ام رسول اللہ یا ام رسول اللہ یا سید الشہداء یا سید حمزہ یا امیر الطیب یا امیر الطیب یا امیر الطیب یا امیر الطیب آپ کے سر سے اجاگر بھی مدینے آ گیا آپ کے سر سے اجاگر بھی مدینے آ گیا حاضری کا سلسلہ آپ ہے بس آپ ہے 
حاضری کا سلسلہ آپ ہے بس آپ ہے یا ہم رسول اللہ یا ہم رسول اللہ یا سید شہدہ یا سیدی حمزہ یا ہم رسول اللہ یا ہم رسول اللہ یا سید شہدہ یا سیدی حمزہ یا حمزہ صلو علی الحبیب صلی اللہ تعالی علی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سیدنا امیر حمزہ رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ a very very beautiful personality we are going to talk about his blessed life as well especially uh, when he reverted to Islam such a beautiful story he was the blessed paternal uncle of the Prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم یعنی he was the chacha the father's son he was the brother of سیدنا عبداللہ رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ سیدنا امیر حمزہ رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ He, when he was not a, a Muslim at that time, he was still the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he loved the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dearly. Now, Hazrat Amir Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was a hunter, he was a warrior. So you can imagine he was a very fit personality. Now, one day when he came back from his hunting trips and he came and his slave girl told him that, Oh, Amir Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the Abu Jahl, ma'azallah, He talked bad about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and he even injured the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He swore at him as well. And Sayyidina Amir Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu, even though he wasn't a Muslim at that time, but he dearly loved the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he picked up his bow and arrow and he went straight to Abu Jahl. And Abu Jahl was sat with his clonies and they were talking about the things that they did today. And Ma'azallah, they were laughing and joking that this is what we did to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Amir Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu struck him with the bow on his head and he started to bleed. Can you imagine all his clones, his cronies were there as well. They, they stood up to attack him. But Abu Jahl knew that they would not be able to fight him. And he became one of the greatest warriors of Islam. And such a person that when Sayyiduna Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he accepted Islam. It says that Sayyiduna Amir Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Sayyiduna Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu made a huge difference to the people of Islam to give them that courage. MashaAllah, we got Habibai in the studio. MashaAllah, Jazakallah khaira for joining Amen. us, Habibai. Amen. It's always a pleasure to have you in the studio, MashaAllah. Obviously with me here and you there, it's a beautiful team. Ji, <laughs> subhanAllah. Um, We're talking about Sayyiduna Amir Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu and we're talking about Sadr al-Shariya, Mawlana Amjid Ali Azmi, rahmatullahi ta'ala ali. Anything that you can mention to us about Sayyiduna Amir Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu or any of these two personalities, we'll take them hand in hand when we talk about them, inshallah. Amir Hamza, the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, such a uh, close uh, relation that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had with him. Mm. And uh, from amongst the uncles, uh, he was one of the most beloved as well. Subhanallah. And, uh, when uh, Amir Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu was martyred, uh, the, the gham, the sadness that the Prophet sallallahu went through and how the Prophet sallallahu dealt with that uh, is, is immense because the, the, the shahadat of Amir Hamza was, uh, it wasn't like just a normal uh, death. Uh, he was shaheed, he was a martyr. But then as well as that, the uh, extra things which the um, at that time the dushman of islam's did with the body that was uh, very disturbing for the prophet and although the the people that did that uh, later on in the life of the prophet they did accept islam so you the hinda who hinda as well the, the wife abu sufyan but uh, whenever the prophet would see them they would feel, uh, you know, that sadness again Indeed. because of their uncle. So the closeness of the Prophet ﷺ with Amir Hamza is, is immense. And, and of course, as we love the Prophet ﷺ, we love so everyone who was close to him as well. And that who he was beloved towards as well. Allah Hazrat Imam Al-Sunnat radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he talks about his beautiful life. And yet he's mentioned him also 
in the khutbah, the sermon of Friday as well. Yeah. You know, you, you see the zikr of Sayyiduna Hamza and Sayyiduna Abbas, yeah. the other great uncle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, when he accepted Islam, you know, that was a turning point for Islam Definitely. because he was a, a fearless warrior. He was, he was very strong and people of Mecca knew about him as well. He had especially, authority. He had, authority. Yeah, he had yeah. authority. And especially Abu Jahl and Abu Lahab, they knew who he was. That is why he says that when he went and he, you know, Sayyiduna Amir Hamza ta'ala anhu, when he struck uh, you know, Abu Jahl with the, with, with the bow on his head, at that time, you know, he ordered the people to stay calm because he knew that things are going to get worse. And as they stay, we're going to get kicked in. <laughs> yeah, so that, that mashallah, a prime example of how his embracing of Islam gave uh, quwwat and strength to Islam as well. And uh, he was also known as the Lion of Allah, Sharif Khuda. So mashallah, you know, uh, Amir Hamza radiallahu ta'ala, immense uh, beauty that we can see from his uh, personality. MashaAllah. And Sayyiduna Amir Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu, you know, uh, Allah Hazrat Imam Ali Sunnah radiallahu ta'ala anhu mentioned in him. And there are many, many scholars. We just heard a, a very beautiful kalam. It was supposed to be at the end, but I made a little skummy mistake and we put it on before. So Alhamdulillah, but it was good, mashallah, to hear the praise of Sayyiduna Amir Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And you know, when you talk about, you know, the early part of Islam, he accepted Islam in Makkah Park. Yeah, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam moved to Medina Tayyibah, sadly, you know, he didn't, you know, have that uh, lifespan where he could have made many, many changes in Islam. But, you know, subhanAllah, the, 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 the amount of life that he had, especially he was given the role of the governor of Medina. And the Ashram. scholars, they say that until the day of judgment, he is the governor of Medina. And there's a, there's a story that I, um, someone mentioned me to me about, um, you know, even if you go today, and uh, in Amir al-Sunnah even talks about that as well. If, if you go to Madinah Park and you go to the Mazar of Sayyiduna Amir Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu and ask for his help and then go to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, your needs will be fulfilled. Mashallah. You know, there was a story about Sayyiduna Ziauddin Madani rahmatullahi ta'ala I heard that, uh, you know, when uh, he was uh, about to be taken out of Madina. He went straight to Sayyidina Amir Hamza's Mazar and he says that, yes, Sayyidi, I don't want to leave Medina. You know, please, can you help me? And he says that, then he went to the Mazar of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As he was walking back home, they were putting everything back into his house again. And also, subhanAllah, for us, yeah, it doesn't matter who the governor is for us, the spiritual governor of Medina is Sayyidina exactly. Amir Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu. MashaAllah, we're also talking about Sadru Sharia, Mawlana Ramjid Ali Azmi rahmatullah ta'ala ali. And I touched upon the book that he's written, Bahari Sharia, the blossoms of Sharia. It actually says on the front cover of the book, Alim Banani Wali Kitab. So if you read this book, the amount of detail that have been mentioned in that, first of all, it covers nearly every topic of fiqh, fiqh meaning jurisprudence, Ji. Islamic law. So every single topic from starting from taharat, purity, uh, even in regard, it starts actually with aqaid. Okay, yeah. it, it starts off with the first chapter is regarding aqidah, and then it goes on to uh, the purity, then salah, then fasting, zakat, hajj, and then it goes on to marriage and all these other um, Islamic trade, business, and all these other things. So many things are compiled in that book. And it's, it's one book, but it's very thick. So in a very beautiful gift set as well. Yeah. I was just talking to the viewers that, you know, it'll be good that if we can have these gift sets of Bahari Sharif, you know, if we could give that um, uh, for, you know, to the scholars, there are many scholars who really can't afford that book as yeah, well. Yeah. So if we can give this set to someone, and also if people, if viewers want to buy it for themselves, maktabatulmadinauk.net, they'll deliver it to your door as well. And Alhamdulillah, it's really such a beautiful book to have our home That's the thing well. as well. Amir Rasanath Ali he says that when we, whenever we, first of all, we should give gifts and, uh, you know, extra uh, money to the imams and to uh, uh, the people who lead our prayers and to, you know, the people of uh, ulama, the scholars, the scholars well, basically. Yeah. And Amir Sun says that, you know, we always give them musalli and tasbihs and, and topis. So they probably got like piles and piles of these kind I of things. I went to Ma Maulana Sahib and he goes, well, Allah na shukar, I've got so many, you know, giant namaz that I could probably sell them in a shop. <laughs> you know, I'll be a millionaire. <laughs> so it's like everything, you know, we, sh we should try to give money to money, the scholars yeah. so that they can use it yeah. anywhere they want as well. Because yeah, unfortunately, um, the mindset of people, they don't really think of uh, imams very highly or scholars very highly. And that needs to change. We need to obviously understand the, the maqam of the ulama, the maqam of the imams. And 
uh, we just think that you know we pay their wages so we own them so this is not the mentality that we should have and this can be seen in uh, the fezan of Allah Hazrat through Sadr Sharia in Alhamdulillah Dawt Islami Dawt Islami has a good system uh, implemented for the you know, know, even scholars. now Habib, I know scholars yeah mashallah they, you know we were talking about yesterday that you know so many scholars have come over from Pakistan to the UK and they were gems of knowledge yeah but when they've come here sadly because you know they, they've met with these kind of committee members that are giving them you know so-called peanuts you know and it's like you know one of my Ma- Ma- Maulana Saab even now he gets paid about 125 pound, 150 pound. And you think to yourself, how can he survive on that? He's yeah. legally allowed. That's, yeah, another, issue that's well. another thing. But because, you know, you, these scholars, yeah. yeah they, they, in the, in the past, people, people still have the mindset that, oh, no, you have to teach, the, you should be teaching the for free, you should be doing these things for free. But in the past, you gotta understand when the scholars did do that for free, it's because they had financial bucking. People Indeed. used to give them money. People used to, uh, you know, uh, provide for them the food and, and give them everything. They didn't need to worry about financial stability, but unfortunately, in today's day and age, uh, people don't care about the imam's financial stability. Indeed. And then at the top, on you know, top of a that, local scholar that uh, you know, mashallah, Zawjal, he's a very, very good teacher. He's an alim al-deen. He's a hafiz al Quran. But I have seen that with his own money, a lot of his own money, he's bought a place that you know he's going to be opening as a masjid and a madrasa sure. as well. And for someone to do that, you know, like some people they say, oh, why do we need masjids? There is always a need for a masjid, Definitely. especially in an area where there is a need. And you know, we see a lot of scholars, and sadly, you know, there are cases where we, we hear about scholars. There was a, a very famous scholar in Pakistan, he's, he sadly passed away now, but uh, you know, he did not have enough money you know, to have his eyes operation. You know, it wasn't you know, a lot of money, it was about two, three lakh rupees. Mm. Two, three lakh rupees, even at that time, it wasn't much money, but he was someone, and he was Shaykh al Hadith. And you understand the value of Shaykh al Hadith, mashallah as well. He was a very, very well known person. But when he came to him, at that time when he needed money, for his, he could not even have the. So, alhamdulillah, we had the. You know, I always say it was a blessing to help him. You know, our Imam Sahib did a in the masjid. And alhamdulillah, we raised enough money for his operation and for him to sit mashallah. at home and retire in our good retired life. And this is what people are failing to realize today. Scholars are today, you know, they've spent their whole life. And mashallah, so what they have, you can never ever achieve. You can have the king of the world, king of the country, but when he offers his salah, he will be happy behind this Imam Sahib. Maybe it's from some people watching this, oh damn, they're definitely not gonna make my son, because if this is what they're talking about, well, you know, the, the amount of money that they get. But Alhamdulillah, Dawat Islami has changed that. You know, we, mashallah, you're a scholar, mashallah, we weighed you with, with gold as well, aren't we? But mashallah, so, you know, Alhamdulillah, this is what Dawat Islami is trying to change. We do have a, a daily reminder. So let's watch this beautiful daily reminder today. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Respectful views of Mother Nation, offering salah is farb upon us five times a day. And remember, there are so many blessings of offering salah. Salah brings barakah, salah brings blessings, salah increases sustenance. Salah is the key to Jannah. And it will be, inshallah, means of light in our dark grave. At the same time, inshallah, this will be known for us on Pul Sirat, Bridge of Sirat. But remember, the one who does not offer Salah, it's also a great missing in his life and it is a grave sin also. Al-Hazrat mentions in Fataba Razawiya, the one who intentionally misses a single Salah becomes deserving of staying in hell for thousand years until he repents and does its qada. Allahu Akbar. So respective views of Madani Shal, can you imagine that just one salah, if someone misses, then astaghfirullah, if Allah wa ta'ala is displeased, then he'll have to stay a thousand years in Jahannam, in hellfire. May Allah forbid. May Allah wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah protect us. But do you know what is the lightest punishment in the hellfire? Allahu Akbar. It is mentioned the lightest punishment, the person who will have hell fire will be such that he'll be given to wear the shoes made of fire and his 
body's mind will boil like water in the kettle. May Allah wa ta'ala protect all the believers from the fire of hell. And may Allah give us tawfiq and ability that we offer salah five times a day. Ameen, Bijahin, Nabil, Ameen, Sallallahu ta'ala, Ala Muhammad, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-Habib, Sallallahu ta'ala, Ala Muhammad, Sallallahu ta'ala, Ali wa sallam. MashaAllah, that was a, a very beautiful reminder. And Alhamdulillah, Azza wa we're here talking about two very beautiful beautiful and important personalities in Islam. Sayyidi Amir Hamza, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the blessed uncle, the lion of Allah Azza wa Jal. He was given the title Asadullah, the lion of Allah Azza wa Jal. And also one of the greatest scholars, Khalifa of Sayyidi Allah Hazrat Imam Ali Sunnat radiallahu ta'ala anhu, none other than Mawlana Amjad Ali Azami rahmatullahi ta'ala ali. MashaAllah, Mawlana Amjad Ali Azami rahmatullahi ta'ala ali, when we talk about his seerah, he had a lot of love for the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And he was uh, such a person that, you know, we talked about him that he never missed his salah even when he was traveling as well. And nowadays what happens when we go on journeys, you know, five times namazi, they call themselves five times namazi, but when they're traveling, they will not offer their salah. Why? Oh, my clothes are not parked. How can you be a Muslim when your clothes are not parked? Well, I'm just trying to, you know, go into your heart. I mean, you know, we say that we are Muslims, but my my clothes aren't clean. And the majority of the time, especially Islamic sisters, you know, when we travel, you know, we, we, they don't offer their salah. Why? Because, oh, there's no place for sisters. Allah Ta'ala has made the whole world as a musalla for us. So please remember, even if you are traveling, even if you're a man or a woman, it's time for salah. You must offer your salah. Do not be neglectful of your salah. And Mawlana Amjid Ali Asmi Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, he used to be such that Subhanallah Azza wa he used to be very, very punctual in his jama'at as well. He used to go to the masjid to offer his salah. And now again, you know, we ask our how many times do we really go to the masjid? Maybe you think that, yeah, Friday I go to the masjid for Juma Salah. But what is the condition that we go to Juma Salah? We're probably running late to the masjid. As soon as we go there, maybe Imam Sahib read the khutbah. Sometimes people think that Juma is just about the two farz. That is not Juma only. You got the khutbah, you got the faraz, and then also you got bayan as well. You know, when do we get the opportunity? to learn about our deen. We're so busy in our life. You know, I'm not saying this in a way that we are really busy. We're not busy really. What we are doing, we've got plenty of time. There is no one that can give us the excuse that I'm really busy. Yeah, but what will happen, these people, they'll go running to the masjid, last five or 10 minutes, or you know, even 10 minutes, last two or three minutes. And as soon as Imam Sahib sits on the khutbah, they'll sit back, suddenly they will not know how to offer their salah. And the next time they will come back to the masjid is when it's Juma Salah again. Why do we offer our salah from Juma to Juma? These people, they were very, very busy people. They had families to look after. They had their own ibadat to do. Yet they were so punctual in their salah as well. And he used to be such a personality that subhanallah azza wa kaisi masroofiyat hoti namaz e fajr ke baad quran e paak used to read one para of the quran every single day no matter how busy he was he used to love reading the quran and again if i go back to every situation you know how much love do we have for the quran maybe we read the quran once in a, a blue moon when someone passed away in our family we'll open up the quran we won't know how to read the quran with tajweed as they say in the quran waratti lil quran tartila we need to read the quran with tartil with the proper manner as it was revealed upon the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wasallam with tajweed with makharij if we don't know that he had love for Rose as well, he used to fast not only in the month of Ramadan, he used to fast outside Ramadan. Ji Habib Abdul Habibai, Sadr Sharia Mawlana Amjad Ali Azmi Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, any glimpse of his life that you want so to share? He was with us? the Khalifa of Imam Ahmad Raza Khan Rahmatullahi Ali. So I think uh, the viewers of Malik Chan would have heard the name of Imam Ahmad Raza, uh, a very famous f scholar of the Indo Pak uh, continent and uh, the Mujaddid the Bishop. reviver of Islam of the last century. From amongst his followers, his disciples, his, uh, his khulafa, his caliphs, one of them was Sadr Sharia, Mawlana Muhammad, uh, Mufti Muhammad Amjad Ali Awdhami. 
the author of Bahari Shariat. Mashallah. So his main duty with uh, Allah Hazrat, so first of all, he was actually, uh, before meeting Allah Hazrat, he wasn't a scholar. He was actually a tabib, a uh, doctor. doctor, a herbal doctor, herbal herbalist. more specifically a herbalist. So he was actually uh, quite well versed in that as well, um, which is also a very good and highly appreciated uh, subject. When he came and uh, he... Uh, proceeded with his Islamic studies under the guidance of Imam Muhammad Raza Khan and once he completed the studies you know he had the option to whether he wants to carry on with his medicine work or whether he wants to carry on with his, with the field of uh, Islamic jurisprudence so Allah Hazrat came up to him and asked him that you know what, what are your views what would you like to do so he said that you know I do like medicine a lot and I think I would like to go into this field so Allah Azad appreciated medicine, he goes, yes, although medicine is a very good uh, subject, but uh, what's rather better, you know, waking up in the morning and seeing, uh, seeing the urine of your patients or going through the books of deen every single day, waking up and opening up the Quran and Hadith. So he gave that kind of analogy to him. So Salat Sharia came and onto the path of teaching. And uh, the two main... Um, Core, you can say his duties were that uh, was assigned by Allah Hazrat Rahmatullah One was uh, the teaching in madrasa. So he would take over and take care of the affairs of teaching in the madrasa. And the second one was dealing with all the uh, uh, the works of Allah Hazrat related to the press. So meaning proof checking them, uh, getting them printed, getting them scanned, uh, all these kind of things. MashaAllah. Uh, he was uh, the take care of that. You well. know, we had uh, we know about Fatawa Alam Giri being one of the greatest books in fiqh as well. Now he says that when Sadru Sharia Rahmatullah Ali, you know, when he wrote uh, Bahari Shariat, he did it alone. You know, so that could also tell you how much, alhamdulillah, knowledge he had. And by spending a lot of time with Allah Hazrat Rahmatullah Ta'ala, you know, he gained the art of learning knowledge because as they say, how to learn knowledge is an art itself as well. Yeah. You know, we see a lot of students, you know, and I'll, I'll put myself in there as well. You know, when you start to learn something, you think, oh, I can't do it. It's because I don't know the art of learning. You know, when, I, when we did Hifaz, yeah, our teacher used to say, right, lift your knee up. And you know, sit on your left foot and then move slightly, rock slightly forward, face towards the wall and keep reading. That is an art that he taught us. Or else what normally happens, you want to read a book, you just read it. And Amir al-Surat, he says, the art of reading is read it and start taking notes as well. So yeah. subhanAllah, and he says that Mawlana Azmi Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, when he, Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Ali made him qazi islam of Hind. Now at sure. that time, Hind was Pakistan, India, Bangladesh. And to be a qazi of all this, I think it was one of the biggest regions that you can say, Hind was a very massive country. That is a, a, a martial, an honor in itself as well. And uh, Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali would have scholars around him and one of the most closest scholars that he would have around him is Maulana Amjad Ali Azmi Rahmatullah Ali. And to write about Bahari Shariat is amazing. Every other scholar, even Amir Ali Sunnah, when he writes any books of fiqh, he takes notes from Bahari Shariat. Yeah, so Bahari Shariat is, you know, a, uh, a majmua. It's a, uh, completion. a com completion of uh, different books. So you can, you can go through all the ta classical texts, Okay, and also the Fatawa books as well. For example, Mashallah. Fatawa Alamgiri. Okay, you got uh, Durul Mukhtar. All these other books compiled together into one single book with all the rulings written there. So it's not just basic rulings; it's very Indeed. intricate rulings as well. Things which are uh, which might not occur, things which might be uh, very rare, but even they have been mentioned in that book as well. So there's a lot in there. This book is obviously. Uh, used a lot by the scholars of Islam. It's a very big book for reference as well. It was uh, written in 27 years, Bahari Shariat. But that doesn't mean that he sat there for 27 years writing this book. You know, he says that whenever he would take time out from his other busy schedule, because if he's a Qazi Islam of Hind, you can imagine how many hundreds and thousands of fatawas that he needed to write. And not only did he write Bahari Shariat, he wrote other books as well. He used to do bayans, he used to run the affairs of the madrasa. And then whenever he used to get time, he used to sit down and he used to write Bahari Shariat as well. SubhanAllah. And he says that in, in the Risala Tazkira Sadr Sharia, Sadr Sharia Rahmatullah Ta'ala in 20 volumes, 
You know, at that time, maybe it was the printing was for about 20 other volumes as well. And no doubt, our Sunni scholars, they will definitely refer to this beautiful book. Definitely. And in regards to uh, uh, some of the other scholars that appreciated Mawlana, Mufti um, Amjad Ali Azmi, rahmatullahi the brother of Ala Hazrat, uh, Muhammad Raza Khan, rahmatullahi he states that, uh, that Mawlana Amjad Ali is a machine of carrying out work so swiftly and a machine that kind that which never fails. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. You know, <laughs> out of Tahdis and Nimr, he himself, he says that if uh, Aurangzeb Alamgir, the king, if he saw Bahari Shariat, he would wave it in gold. Subhanallah. You know, subhan and that's, you know, it's, it's not because he was Ma'azallah greedy of money, but that's, you know, he, 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 that was his value. That if he saw me, now Aurangzeb Alamgir, he, you know, when you say Fatawa Alamgir, he wasn't written by Aurangzeb Alamgir. He was uh, assigned to, uh, by him to the, to the scholars of Yeah, he had a, a collection of scholars. MashaAllah. And he says it. that if, if he was alive and he saw my book, he would have, you know, weighed me with gold as well. SubhanAllah. Uh, dear views of Madrid channel, you know, when you talk about these personalities, you know, Alhamdulillah, it brings a smile to your face and you, be, you feel proud of these guy people. They spent all their lives learning and studying their deen. Or else, to be honest with you, if we had not had Allah, Hazrat Omar, Mawla, Sadr Sharia, we would have been really struggling yeah, because right. majority of the fiqh books were in Arabic. And what happened was Islam, when it started to grow and when Islam started to spread in, in India, and you know, at that time, you know, it was these great scholars that sacrificed their life for Islam. You know, sacrificed their time, their family time, everything for the sake of deen. And today, you know, we are here, sir, here talking about their lives. But I, 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 I commonly mention this as well. Are people going to say 100 years after we've died and they're going to talk about us? You know, people won't. Maybe our own family members. Let's, let's be honest here. You know, do we ever remember our grandfathers, our great grandfathers? We don't. So therefore, when we die, maybe there'll be no one. Because Amir al Sunnah he says, what's, what's the legacy that these people, this was their legacy that left behind. Yeah, definitely. And you know, the, re the main reason why, well, there's two main reasons why we normally discuss the seerah of these ulama -i karam, the saints of Islam. Uh, number one is, in the dhikr salihina tanazalu rahmah. That at the time of mentioning the pious, the blessings of Allah are showered upon the people. So that's one reason. The second reason is so then we can try to take some from their life and implement it in our life as well. And you know, Sadr Shiriya, rahmatullahi uh, he was a, a, a valley of Allah as well, a saint of Allah. You know, the miracles that were from him, uh, amazing. You know, if, uh, many things which were very strange spectacles um, that uh, if I was to mention on Madin Chalun, the, the, the viewers probably will find it very, very ajeeb, very strange, you know, seeing his body parts being uh, in different parts and things. So there was, uh, he was a very famous saint of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but one thing that we can understand from his life is his rigorous uh, um, care and routine for the uh, for the religion of Islam, for the uh, propagation of the deen. So and he thought, thought and felt himself that is, it's my responsibility to propagate the deen as well. And if every single individual, especially the views of Madin Shah, had this mind and thought that I need to rectify myself, I need to reform myself, and it's my responsibility to also reform my family members, the community around me, the people around me, inshallah, slowly but surely, we can try to bring a change in the world. You know, if you're rectifying the family members, especially if it's the father who's listening, it's a duty upon him. You know, mm -hmm. Allah Ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, Ya yuhalladhina manuku al-fusakum wa ahlikum nara. You know, so if saving your family and yourself from the fire of hell has been mentioned and ordered by Allah Azza wa So as Muslims, it's sometimes, you know, people just say, oh, yeah, this is the work of the Ulamai Kiram. Hey, you know, so what is our job? Just to sit back home and do nothing. You know, that's not the job of the Ulamai Kiram to spread the knowledge of the deen. Now, amongst us, you know, maybe if I'm not a scholar, but I do my business, yeah, I'm quietly, highly open business. Now, as a Muslim, it is my duty now that all my colleagues that work with me, even the people that I deal with, if they're not Muslims, as a Muslim, it is my duty to invite them towards the deen. So next, you know, next time when we go to work in the morning, just don't think to yourself that my job is to sit in the shop and just sell my products. 
Oh, I go and do big, big, you know, people do a lot of big business deals. You know, we talk about Imam Bukhari, Rahmatullah. Imam Bukhari, Rahmatullah, he was a millionaire. Imam Azam Abu Hanifa, Rahmatullah, a millionaire. You know, yes, we do find some scholars like Imam Abu Yusuf, Rahmatullah, who started off with a very, very poor person. But when he became Qazi al when he became the judge of all the judges of his time, you know, he was a wealthy person as well. But you see, their lifestyle was still the same, you know, simple and everything. Mm -hmm. But yet the amount of money that they had, everything was given. You know, so, Imam Abu Hanifa, although he was such a big businessman, but still every night would pray so many nawafil. I think it was narrated around, around about a thousand nawafil every each night. night. And then in the morning he had his, his uh, lessons to teach and his students to teach. So uh, it's amazing. So I think the, the main aspect that we can take from this is to try to reform ourselves as well, inshallah. MashaAllah, we've got a daily hadith, inshallah, every day. Let's go towards the daily hadith and see what we are going to be taught today. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Today we will be listening to a hadith which relates to the blessings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sayyidina Rabi'a bin Ka'b Aslami radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, One day, I helped the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam make wudu. Pleased, the beloved and blessed Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to me, Rabi'a, ask, you will be given for what you ask for. I replied, I ask you to keep me company in heaven. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam further asked, Anything else? I replied, Just this. In other words, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after seeking your closeness in Jannatul Firdos, what is left in this world and the hereafter for me to ask for? After Sayyidina Rabi'a radiallahu ta'ala anhu asked for the closeness of the beloved and blessed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Jannatul Firdaus and declined to ask for anything else, the Prophet of Rahmah, the intercessor of Ummah, the owner of Jannah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, then help me by prostrating abundantly. In other words, we have granted you heaven now keep offering nafl salah abundantly as gratitude. The viewers of Madani channel, this blessed hadith has refreshed our faith. Sayyidina Shaykh Abdul Haq Muhaddis Dailvi Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayhi has said, The word ask uttered by the blessed tongue of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam without any restriction and limitation shows that he has complete authority given to him by Allah Azza wa Jal. He can give whatever and to whomever he wants. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah, this is such a beautiful opportunity to work towards our deen. Look, our scholars, you know, let's be honest here. Yeah. You know, Habibi, mashallah, who's a sign in front of us here, yeah. they've studied for seven, eight years, and that study doesn't finish. I always say your real study begins after you've qualified. Why? Because now you need to read books and after books and books. And I want to talk about <laughs> Bulti Qasim Saab. He read so many, I think it was a hundred books, yeah, in, uh, in, in the past uh, few months that you know, in NBA. Why? Because now is the true time to learn. And one very yeah. beautiful aspect, Habibi, is uh, that, uh, you know, Mawlana Amjadari Azmi Rahmatullahi Ta'ala is the one who persuaded Allah Hazrat Rahmatullah Ali to translate the Quran in, in, in Urdu language because we didn't have Kanzul Iman. Now, whenever we say translation from Kanzul Iman, you know, we're so easy, mashallah, and it's been translated into many, many languages as well. But Mufti Amjali Azmi Rahmatullah Ali, he, he, he saw the need of a Urdu translation, especially, you know, an Urdu translation which has the love of Allah and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because at that time there were Urdu translations, but they were 
were just mere word to word translations. There was no love of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Hazrat Rahmatullah he said that, you know, how am I, he didn't even say, how am I going to get the time? You know, he said, how am I going to have the respect? You know, I, and he says that Allah Hazrat used to have wuzu, you know, whenever he would read, read, read the Quran or write the Quran. Muslims, mashallah, are millionaires. There might be someone watching this now. Yeah, Allah Ta'ala has given you wealth. Now this wealth is not that we can spend it anywhere we want. On the day of judgment, we will be asked about this wealth. How did we earn the money? Where did you spend the money? Yes, one question will be, where did you spend that money? Now let's look at ourselves. We spent it in our homes, in our car, fine. Alhamdulillah, nothing wrong with that. But are we going to say that, Ya Allah, I spent this money, and Ya Allah, I printed this so-and-so book for the sake of Allah Azawajal. If you have the means, if Allah has given you something, Please try to help us print these books as well. Maktabatul Madina is a printing department of Dawud Islami, and we need millions of pounds every year to print these books as well. You know, regarding you mentioning about people who are, mashallah, Allah has given them wealth, Gee. and they should spend those, uh, you know, how, how much are we going to save? How much, uh, you know, we should, some people, they, they save so much, and they don't even use that money, Gee. even on themselves or even on their family. So who are we saving that money for? There was one person who was mentioned uh, in Karachi. He actually passed away and his bank account had, I don't know, so many Arab rupees in it. Allah Akbar. But because he did not know, let anyone know of his next of kin, because of the fear that, you know, someone might rob my bank or take uh, forcefully to get the money from me. Gee. And because of that, he never even told his close family. And all of the Arab rupees has now just gone to waste. The bank has to take it because there's no next of kin and that yeah. person's passed away. So, uh, you know, if we've got money, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with money. Even if we are poor as well, and you probably notice that the people who are more poor, they have a, a more richer more, heart and richer. they give more in the path of Allah. They give even to other people who are poor. So if you are uh, wealthy, well off, then definitely spend in the cause of Allah, spend on your family members and uh, don't just accumulate that wealth. And as the Quran mentions as well regarding uh, accumulating wealth and you'll be questioned regarding accumulating wealth as well. So try to uh, spend in the path of Allah. You know, especially Abibi, if you have good pious children, then that wealth can come into their use and you know that they'll spend it in a good way. But sadly, if your children, Ma'azallah, are not practicing Muslims, the, all the wealth, where is it going to go? Parties, clubbing, you know, Moja, Aisha, they're going to go yeah. there. You know, and, and I've seen you know, so many of these. So if, you're, if the viewers are listening, you know, I'll be honest with you, Alhamdulillah, there are millionaires and billionaires that are supporting Dawatis. Without their support, the work of Deen will be impossible. Now, with that intention, what is the intention going to be? I'm supporting this, I'm doing this. No, you're not doing anyone a favor. You're doing yourself a favor right. by spend. Allah has given you that opportunity to spend that wealth or else there's millionaires that don't even spend a penny in the way of Allah. Now they might be thinking, yeah, we're millionaires, we're this, we're that. Allah hasn't even given you the opportunity. Tawfiqi Allah that you can spend your money in that way. So please, if you have the money, Alhamdulillah Azza wa Jal, you have the opportunity now. We have the time. Dawati Islami, Alhamdulillah, has its own department, FGRF, you know, Fezan Global Relief Work. That is you know, all the relief work that is happening in many, many poor countries as well. Obviously, we can't do that alone ourselves. You know, it's, it's not only Dawati Islami or Fezan. MashaAllah, many Sunni organizations that are working for the deen as well. So please support these people, you know, and especially when it comes to the work of deen. You know, there's so many, Allah Hazrat Rahmatullah Ali, not all of his books were published because they didn't have the means to publish them. There wasn't enough money. So if Allah Ta'ala has given you the means, please come forward. The book of Miriam al-Sunnah, which is known as mother of all evils. Now this is about alcohol. Sadly, you know, that time is coming, summertime, where Muslims will be sadly drinking away their sharab. So what we're going to do is we're going to sponsor this book, Mothers of Mother of All Evils. We want to stand outside the masajid. We want to stand outside, you know, the, 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 the schools and universities and give this book out so we can save our Muslim ummah, our youngsters. To be honest with you, because we are looking forward, we're not looking around us, what is happening around us. There are Muslim nightclubs. There are Muslim, you know, alcohol places where Muslims are drinking at night, drinking day and night. Not only brothers, our sisters as well. And if we distribute this book to someone and someone may read that, 
maybe if he changes, that would be your money well spent. So please think about that. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even begging in front of you because this is the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'm not asking for you for my next beautiful car. I'm not asking you for that. I've got enough money to buy my next car. Lakin, help the deen of Allah Azza wa We've got, mashallah, beautiful cartoon. Ghulam Rasul, mashallah. Uh, we're going to be watching that, inshallah. Azza wa Sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Denise Fatima slowly. Why are you in a hurry? People in the house can get worried because of this. Stop, Kaniz Fatima. Our Islam teaches us the manners of entering the house. Manners of entering the house? Yes, Alhamdulillah Azza wa Jal. Our beautiful religion teaches us manners for everything. So listen, before entering home, recite this dua after Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma inni as'aluka khayral mawlaji wa khayral makhraji Bismillahi walajna wa bismillahi kharajna wa ala Allahi rabbina tabakkalna After that, enter the house with the right foot first Then say salam to the family members and enter the house and if there's no one at home then say assalamu alayka ayyuhan nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh So Kaniz Fatima will you remember these things? Why not brother Ram Rasul? First of all read Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim and then enter with the right foot. Mm, then say salam. If there's no one at home then say assalamu alayka ayyu an nabiyyu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Mm. <laughs> Oh wow, spinach! I just love spinach. But Brother Ram Rasul told me that we have to wash our hands and mouth before eating. Mmm, mashallah! But Ganesh Fatima, you have to change your clothes. Take your shoes off, put them on the shoe rack, wash your hands and face, and then eat. Otherwise, the school uniform can get dirty if you don't change it. Okay, Brother Ram Rasul, I'll be right back. Dear children, today we learnt that we should end home with Bismillah and the right foot, and also say Salaam. You too, make this your habit. And earn loads of reward. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. MashaAllah Azawajal, Ghulam Rasul in itself, you know, is a, is a work in itself. And we've been discussing this as well. Okay, we need a team of people that can, you know, because Ghulam Rasul is originally in Urdu language. Now we need someone to edit this and also to record this in the English language. So obviously, you know, the Ghulam Rasul is a character of a child. And I can't play Ghulam Rasul because I'm an uncle. Now what we need is, we need people to uh, translate Ghulam Rasul to us and help us out in that. And I was, uh, I was asking one of the Islamic brothers and they said that um, Ghulam Rasul in itself is costing about one lakh rupees just to make one cartoon of Ghulam Rasul. So that is an, an, an offer, a lot of money there as well. So again, you know, you can help out Islamic. Habib, any last closing remarks on these great personalities? So the line of Allah, Shere Khuda, Sayyidina Amir Hamza radiallahu ta'ala. MashaAllah, I think from uh, one of the main things that we can take from his life was the love and devotion that he had for uh, the passion that he had for the religion of Islam. You know, how much he sacrificed for the religion when it came to the time of uh, of the battle he sacrificed his life in uh, so, Muhammad Muhammad. so uh, definitely uh, whenever the Zaireen the the people that go to visit Medina I would definitely encourage you to visit the mountain of Uhud and just in the 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 sides of mountain of Uhud the Mazar the resting place of Sayyidina Amir Hamza who is also there as well 
so you can visit that place. Mm-hmm. MashaAllah, uh, so now what we need to do is, uh, Sayyidina Amir Hamza, he's, he's paved the way for us how we as Muslims should be living our lives to the love of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Any last remarks? Uh, That's def- the second last remarks. <laughs> Definitely in regards to the love of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I think the immense love can be shown when uh, he defended the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at the time when he was being uh, ridiculed and embarrassed by uh, Abu Jahl. And at that time, the way that he um, uh, defended and uh, attacked Abu Jahl, and uh, he, uh, he, he honored the name of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his great love. And definitely because of his family, the nephew, uh, I'm sure everyone that has nephews or nieces or uh, you know, sons and daughters, they have immense love for them. So yeah, sure. definitely for as part of the family, they had immense love as well. And when your nephew is the Prophet of Allah, exactly. Allah you can't have a better nephew than that. Uh, gee, mashallah, that brings us to the end of the program. Jazakallah khaira. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, even the darkest night will end, and the sun will rise and shine, and the sun will rise and shine.